Hey, hey, you're with Easy Cheesy. I gotta talk fast, guys, because we got a lot to cover. Is the trailer done? Well, are these kinds of projects ever done? In this video, I'm gonna give you the highlights of a usable product. It will probably always be growing and changing as time goes on. I'm gonna interject a few of the things from uh, the trailer when I first got it for folks that are just dropping in for the first time. It, it doesn't have a, a, a bad look. It doesn't have a bad stance for being homemade. Now this uh, platform had some unique features and with anybody that starts a project like this, don't be discouraged. Work around what you've got. Don't try to copy exactly what I did. Find out what works for you and go with the flow. Um, I like the contrast and the color scheme. It turned out way better than I thought. Uh, these corners that we worked on, I used that spray foam called Great Stuff. I got it at Home Depot. It was uh, very difficult to control, very difficult to use, very sticky stuff for this kind of application. I used a basic uh, caulk. I asked for some paintable latex caulk. And then I had this... Uh, a quart of paint color match to the trailer it looks different here I might put another coat on it but I can feel there's a little bit of give there and that's what I want I wanted this to be watertight and it gave it a, a finish and I just used plain clear silicone up there at the top and there you can see my rain gutter sticking out now on the front I kinda admit I had to go overboard I moved my toolbox just a little bit to the front so that when I put the lid up, it uh, it stays up by itself. And yeah, there it is. <laughs> I splurged. I wasn't going to do this, but like I said, it turned out so nice. Uh, I put about 100 miles yesterday. I went to the place that, bought, that sells this stuff. It's called El Rico in Henderson, Colorado. Great folks to work with. They have tons of stuff. And this is not the thinnest diamond plate. This is 1 16th inch thick. And I just went with a full 4x8 sheet. We didn't have to cut it, trim it, do a single thing. And I went ahead and put these uh, eye bolts all the way through, th through the round pipe inside. On oh, there's a nut on the other side. These are stainless steel with stainless steel washers. Now the back gate, uh, is like I said it is close uh, this was very difficult to do these doors and very difficult to line up so let's open it up this piece of pipe insulation is here is because I haven't figured out what I want to do to a with a latch and the right door is loose the left door is latched and I'll show you how what I came up with for that latch so let's go ahead and drop this tailgate Since I do have a bed in there, I figured it's a good idea not to have a locking latch out here because some smart ass might decide to lock me in there and put up the ramp. I, I am probably at some point in time when I find the right thing going to put a side door or something inside. So here's the car and uh, I've showed the inside before but let's take another look right now just so uh, folks can see what... Uh, how it turned out. Sorry about the shaky cam. Car fits in there good. I've got my bed and sleeping quarters. This is my first look this morning. Uh, what I did on the top is I just, I went through stuff that I already had. Uh, I used uh, just a plain old padlock type hasp and that'll be loose up there. And on the bottom, I just used a cross bolt again, something that I had. I put a piece of uh, angle on the floor. I used a piece of cedar that I had bought and using that for a stop. 
I've got this uh, forged eyelet that goes underneath the bottom of the trailer through a piece of steel that is welded to the main frame of the trailer. So this is pretty secure. This is a strap that uh, came with the buggy when I got it. And I bought this link. Uh, that, that tie is to uh, keep this piece of sheet metal from uh, flopping around. Uh, all Volkswagens, in my opinion, if they don't leak, they will leak. So but this is about the uh, the door. I made the door out of 3 8 plywood. I caulked. I put the foam in, caulked, and tried to seal these doors up. There's no way that a hinge like these little gate hinges are going to be strong enough to hold this size of a material and, and keep it out there as you're going down these rough roads. So what you want to do is you want this... Uh, this end piece here to be secure and sit down here on so it's it's even rubbing let it make contact down there let it rub and you want to do that on both sides so that it's solid and you're not yanking on those hinges all the time because nothing's going to last for long if you look at the commercial made trailers they have very heavy duty hinges and i'm sure this is going to be redone uh, over and over again <clears throat> the wind could catch it what I've done for a little bit of a wind guard <clears throat> because there is a limit to how far that you can put the the hinges on the other side that'll allow the door to go clear back against the wall I chose not to do that because um, I didn't have those kinds of hinges and this worked out best for my applications all the choices i made here are not the best choices necessarily they might not be the best choices for you but it's what i thought was the best choice at the time this uh two by three stud that goes down here that i mounted to um and you could do it in steel but i want to caution anybody that's making something like this if you try to make things too stiff and too rigid with all the shaking going down the road um, you're going to get cracks. Um, nothing, it, everything's flexing. Everything's moving constantly all the time. You want the flexible caulk. You want uh, to allow things to move and find its happy spot. Um, this door is going to be, I just put this 2x4 to support the hinge in the back. And I may continue it on. I may replace that. I may end up changing the, the hinge, but I built it this way so that I have access to the complete hinge. I'm going to carry a spare hinge with me. This uh, 2x3 stud can be removed. It only goes up this high um, so that as things get torn up or accidents happen, you can easily access it to repair it or maybe do a field repair. Now for this, to, to keep the wind from catching it, I've got a chain on both sides and, and it sat there for the whole hundred miles It stayed connected. I cut out a piece of this diamond plate and the idea would be to uh, just hook it in here and it gave me room to do that without a hassle. I also got this bungee cord. I can loop this big enough to get the bungee cord through. I can come up to the links of the chain and use the, the bungee. But I don't want this thing swinging around as I'm driving the car in and out. And I think I'll secure this other side. Uh, just because we're here. This was very simple. Uh, actually primitive. You can see where the car's been rubbing on this stud. That's how close everything is in this particular application. I'm going to do this right now before I forget. Because I feel a breeze. It's a beautiful day. Summertime. And uh, I got my stop block on the bottom as well as this lightweight piece of aluminum on top. You can see it's where it's been rubbing. I got this really cool I uh, saw it. I got all this stuff basically from Home Depot. This is barn siding and this uh, fits top tight, really tight. So I don't have to worry about water getting in here. I took a small brush and I painted all the ends of my plywood. The end grain is where water will wick up into the wood see that the breeze is blowing right there so i tried to seal 
all the end pieces. I didn't want to uh, paint the inside, and I like the, the feel of wood, so I put uh, tongue oil, just used a uh, cotton cloth, and I put tongue oil on some of the panels. I st still have to do the uh, ceiling, and I did that so that uh, it, it won't dry out and crack and give you splinters and that type of thing. Uh, well, look at that. I've got my, those straps did stay on the wheels. It felt like I could, maybe it was the trailer hitch that I felt. I use this E-Track system. I really like this E-Track. Um, they have, uh, it's available at Harbor Freight in a copycat form. I didn't like the looks of the Harbor, Harbor Freight stuff and it wasn't uh, of the same quality and finish as this. Uh, I've got these grade eight bolts quarter inch crate eight bolts and they go through the, the the bottom of the trailer i tried getting the frame where i could and i've used the uh a cut up a piece of track in sections with a bandsaw and put those on the bottom to trap it uh this is working out real good i had this piece left over so i'm going to keep my accessories right there and when i'm taking out these uh pieces here I'll have some place to put them where they won't get lost and I have a couple spares uh, right there the bed breaks down you can hinge this thing up or you can and you can pull these studs up if you want more cargo space uh, I choose to have it this way so that I've got a place to crash when I'm traveling down the road here are my wheel well covers for the inside I haven't put those on yet oh this is basically the crux of it. It all started off with this uh, inch and a half round tubing, which kind of made it unique. Most uh, things you're going to find are going to have flat surfaces. Uh, a lot of uh, RVs are made out of uh, uh, pine studs, uh, real small too, uh, just like these fur strips. They just staple the heck out of it, and they just have a lot of layers of... These layers give you strength. And I used this on the inside so that I wouldn't accidentally bang into it, make a dimple in the outside skin, and the same thing from the outside so it would go on the inside, wouldn't be making a dent. Give it a little support, and this way you can have a structure. I like having this exposed so that I can do these things. I added a piece of unistrut here to just loop and stick things in. I'm probably going to put some plywood down here to add some little narrow pockets and if things get wild in here it'll keep the keep the buggy from completely breaking out. But uh, at any rate I just wanted to post up a video and show you the uh, basically the finished product. I'm real pleased with how it turned out. I've got a lot to uh, clean up here. I had a little bit of material left over. You have to buy four by eight sheets of stuff. And uh, I could have used that chipboard, but that stuff is very heavy. This thing, I rolled it across the scales at a landscape place. With the car in it, it's about 3,300 pounds. So I figured that the trailer itself is right at about 2,000. And you have to watch the load limit on your tires and bearings and that sort of things to be safe. But that deck plate really put the finishing touch on it, and uh, it'll look nice for a while. It'll dull over time, but it, it'll look nice for a while. And I know it's a flat wall that you're trying to move through it, and there's not, it's, there's no aerodynamics involved. It was more important for me to use, utilize the space inside to the maximum. Um, I don't think I'm going to be going, uh, you know, on traveling that often um, so I'm gonna pay the penalty for the wind resistance it tows real nice without sway bars or any equalizer hitch and uh, I'm very pleased with the whole thing in general I I'd, uh, give some ideas for people that want to attempt this on your own have some great adventures thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy